Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to create a bird in flight composite image, walk you through the process of editing in Photoshop, and at the end of the video I'll include some tips to keep in mind while out in the field. Okay, let's get right into it. In the interest of time, I'm going to start with a series of flight shots that have already been processed in Lightroom. So as I cycle through these, these photos, you can see that um, uh, in the background there's kind of like a little lip, a little uh, curved piece of ice, and um, I'm going to kind of use that as a reference point. So as I layer the different frames, I can kind of see you know, roughly where the placement of the, uh, the ducks should be in each frame. The next thing you're going to do is determine what is the most important frame or what's the frame that you want to focus on. Um, in this case I have the the last frame which is the frame where the duck's wings are up and uh, there's some nice splashing going on. So that will be my, my focal point. Okay so I'm going to start by um, by moving um, each of the images into that single frame, uh, the last frame that I want to, to be the main um, scene. And I'm going to set the layers to 35% uh, opacity just so that I can kind of, you know, start playing around with the positioning um, before I actually cut them out. So we're just going to go through and just um, do that to all of these right here. And uh, for this last frame, I'm just going to keep it a little bit off, uh, off screen just to kind of keep consistent with the um, the direction of the bird. So again, I can play around with the positioning just to make sure it's, um, you know, it's exactly the way I would like it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, um, with a shot like this, um, the water, um, the water level has to look correct. So if you have um, a bird, you know, let's say the second frame, second from the last frame, and you raise it too high, that's you know, the water level is not going to match the last frame. So you want to keep that in mind when you're positioning. For um, for obviously a simple um, background, you know, if it's a bird in flight um, with just a solid blue background, you have a lot more flexibility. But in this case, we have a little bit more constraint just based on the physical um, properties of the background. So once I have um, everything positioned exactly the way I want it to be, I'm going to start the um, cutting out process. One thing you're going to try to do when you have all of your different shots together is try to think of um, a nice curve, kind of like a, you know, an invisible curve between all the heads or all the wings of the birds. That just helps to make a nice pleasing image. So in this case, I just have like a nice kind of ramped up um, curve as the duck comes in for its landing. So one of the easiest ways to um, isolate a subject um, in the scene is to go to select and then subject. And um, this is something that's um, only available for newer versions of Photoshop. Um, and it's also not 100% perfect, but I find it's a good starting point. So once we have that uh, selected, we can go um, to the bottom right corner of your screen and uh, select the mask tool. And uh, you can see it did a you know a fairly good job. There's um, there's some space in between the wings that are not that's not perfect. So there's two methods of uh, solving this problem um, of the extra space. One of the ways you can do this is by selecting the mask, going to select and then select and mask. And then once um, this loads, what you could do is you can select a second um, second brush, the refine edge brush from the top, and just start painting away the white areas. Now you want to keep in mind, you don't want to make the brush too large um, because then you will, um, you'll end up cutting into the, um, the actual bird. So you can see I'm painting away the edge and it's doing a fairly good job. One thing to keep in mind is it depends on the background you have. The more complicated the background, um, the more um, crucial it's going to be to get that perfect. If the background's simple, it's a lot easier. So you can see here, it's not you know it's not perfect. There's still some areas that are not uh, correct. But when I put it on the background, most of that is forgiven because um, it's just it you know it's it's close enough. And of course, you can spend more time on this as you do it yourself. And then the third method is to actually manually adjust the um, the mask. So you can do that by selecting the um, uh, the brush tool and switching to a white color. And what that will do is it will just allow you to adjust what is shown and what's not shown. So white would be um, if you wanted to 
um, cut into the bird. So if you want to, let's say, you know, get rid of the, some white areas in between the wings, you can do that. If you want to do the reverse and you want to show more, then you would switch to black. So I'm going to go through the rest of the frames um, really quickly here, but it's going to be repeating the same process. So we'll start off with selecting the subject since that's the easiest option. And then if that works, that's great. If not, we'll go to the um, select and mask option. That should clean it up uh, further. And then any other tweaks, I'll just use the manual um, paintbrush to uh, paint the mask. One thing you'll find is that if there is any kind of shadow um, underneath the bird, if it's close to the water or something like that, you're going to have to, um, you might have to actually just do a bit of a feathering on the edge just to kind of blend it into the, the background. So again, you would use the uh, brush tool. Just make sure you set the feathering a bit higher so that it creates a nice soft transition. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this right now. Um, all the frames look good, um, the positioning looks nice. One of the things um, for this particular shot, because it's shot in a way where um, the animal is coming towards the camera and the, um, the depth of field is going to change obviously from the first frame to the last frame, if we want it to look you know, realistic as if actually was shot that way, we're going to have to add artificial blur to the farther frames. So what I'm going to do is I'll start off by first making the um, other frames into smart objects and then once I have them as smart objects I can actually add a blur filter to them. So the reason I have them as smart objects is just because if you were to keep them as images and then you apply the blur once you've committed that blur it's it's set it's part of the pixels but if you have them as if you have the layers as smart objects then any changes you make um, are non-destructive, so you can you can change that later if you want to tweak settings. So of course, um, if you look at the um, foreground image, the image of the bird um, fully landed, you'll see that the the actual depth of field is quite shallow. So I want to mimic that as I go farther and farther back. So um, you know I'll start off with a radius of you know something small um, like 1.5, and then as I go back, I'll get progressively stronger to something like a uh, five or something like that and you'll just see that that'll just help to sell the shot it'll just make it feel um, a bit more realistic okay I think that's it here are a few tips I'll leave you with number one the subject needs to be moving. This technique only works when the subject is moving in relation to the background. If you had a bird performing some kind of behavior while not moving in the frame, you would end up with a composite image of the bird on top of itself. I find that sequences of bird flying sideways, taking off or landing work best. Number two, clean backgrounds are easiest to work with. The cleaner and more consistent your background is between all frames in your sequence, the easier it will be to merge them together in a composite. Number three, know your camera. Get comfortable with your camera and practice getting consistently sharp images. One of the challenges with this technique is that you need to have all the frames in a sequence sharp. A few times I haven't been able to make a final flight composition because a few key frames were out of focus, but with a little luck and patience you'll find that it's possible. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, consider subscribing.